What's up guys? Just wanted to kind of touch base with everyone and talk about a few things coming up as well as do a first impressions review on my brand new Celestron 25 by 70 binoculars that I picked up to use this year for astronomy. This is a great month for stargazing and astrophotography. Uh, so stick around guys, join me because I don't think you're gonna wanna miss this one. channel my name is Jonathan and I do videos and vlogs about astronomy and astrophotography from the dark skies of West Virginia I do image processing videos gear reviews and post raw data from time to time for you guys to practice your processing skills if that's something that you're into go ahead and subscribe to the channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my video uploads so let's start with the talk of the astronomy community. If you haven't heard yet, there's a comet making its way across the night sky that has uh, many amateur astronomers and astrophotographers excited. Uh, comet C-2023 ZTF has been passing through the northern constellation of Corona Borealis since first being discovered uh, at the beginning of 2022, but now it's uh, making its way closer to the sun, moving northwest throughout January for northern hemisphere observers. If you happen to be in a southern hemisphere, it will become visible but you might have to wait till early February as it continues its voyage closer to Earth. This comet is expected to be visible with the naked eye but comets brightnesses are uh, very hard to predict therefore binoculars or a telescope is suggested to guarantee basically a glimpse. A truly fantastic opportunity to witness a comet if you've never seen one. If you miss Comet Neowise or Comet Leonard uh, here's another chance to get a good photograph. What also makes this comet uh, even more interesting is the last time that it came around was nearly 50,000 years ago with Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals roaming the plains. So it's likely this will be the last pass before being flung off into deep space. So after Thursday, January 12th, sky gazers in the northern hemisphere should look close to the northeastern horizon just before uh, midnight to spot it. And here is uh, kind of the best time for my area that I found where the comet will be close to something pretty recognizable in the sky. So we'll take a look at that real quick. Okay, so here we are on the computer, and I have Stellarium open here, and this is just a free planetary software you can download. I will leave a link in the description for anybody who wants to download that. But you can see here on January 21st, we got the Big Dipper here, and we can see the comet right below the bottom star of the Big Dipper. And as we change days here to the 22nd, and we continue to go up to the 23rd, 24th, 25th. You can see it gets closer and closer to that top star in the Big Dipper. And that really would be my recommendation is about the 28th is your best bet to really see this thing. And this is based on 11.49 p.m. So at 11.49 p.m. just go outside and look right next to the Big Dipper on the 29th and you should be able to spot this thing. These are the Celestron Skymaster 25 by 70 astronomy binoculars and I picked these up uh, about a month ago just basically for this comet. I got these uh, on eBay used so I got them for half the price but you can pick up a pair for under 100 bucks. It's really the lowest amount that you want to pay for uh, to guarantee that you still get a quality view so I wouldn't go really any cheaper than these. These are kind of like uh, very entry level uh, just beginner binoculars. They do come with a tripod adapter. They do get kind of heavy and uh, 25 by 70. The 25 means everything is 25 times magnified so it does have a pretty long reach on them kind of makes them a little hard to get a good view unless you use a tripod with them so my first impressions I liked them straight out of the box they uh, seem pretty well built for the money and I have kind of just looked at a couple stars one night but I haven't really uh, got to really fully review them yet so we'll use this chance to really use it to see the comet and hopefully we can get a good picture so yeah see what we can do Guys, 
here we are. I'm super excited. This is the first night I've had clear in such a long time, it feels like. The sky's looking pretty clear. Um, it is calling for kind of patchy clouds throughout the night, so hopefully we can get some uh, a little bit of time on this comet. Um, it's still a bit early. It's about uh, going on 8 o'clock, so Orion's pretty high over here, and the comet really won't be uh, visible for my location here until about 1 o'clock or so maybe 12 we'll take a look then but until then i'm just going to get the red cat uh slewed to a target and we're just going to kind of capture a couple hours on something before the comet rises so i've actually been working on a project shooting m78 also known as casper the friendly ghost nebula and it is located in orion right across from barnard's loop so i'm getting a pretty wide field with uh, a lot of that hydrogen alpha I'm using the L-Pro filter tonight, but I will be adding some hydrogen alpha data to this project um, eventually, maybe the next clear night. Once I get this thing locked on and rolling, I'm going to pull out the binoculars here and we'll really take a look around and see what we can see. I've been kind of wanting to see Orion through it just to see what it looks like and check out the Orion Nebula, so let's do it. Even though I live in a Bortle 3 area, it comes at a heavy price. Because the Alleghenies trap moisture flowing into the state from north and west, most of the state experiences only 60 to 65 clear nights per year and only 164 sunny days per year on average. So, any clear time I can get, I'll take it. It's like you almost have to push your face into them to get the full field of view, but uh, Seems like I can get them pretty sharp. Um, the focus knob here in the middle, you just kind of adjust this back and forth and you can kind of tilt them back and forth here too on, a, on the middle hinge. And I do have them on a tripod here and you definitely want to use a tripod with these because they're, they don't look that big and bulky, but they are. Um, you try to hold them up and it's so magnified that it's hard to just hold them in place. You end up just like shaking so much that you can't actually like stop and look at what you're seeing. It's all just like shaky. So I recommend using a tripod and this is just a little travel tripod and it seems to be, uh, work fine. Maybe a better adapter. This one's just plastic, the one that came with it, which I'm not complaining because it was free, but I have to tell you, man, it's pretty sharp views. The only thing I really notice is I feel like I really have to push my face into them to get the full field of view, but um, I really didn't have to do much adjusting. Just this middle knob here, um, that kind of gets a uh, pinpoint. And then if you turn this right, uh, this right eye cup here, if one eye is a little different than the other, you can kind of adjust it with this. But uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, I really haven't used them enough to really say much more about them, but I don't notice any chromatic aberration around the stars. I haven't had a chance to look at the moon yet, so we'll see, but I plan on doing a full review on these eventually. So yeah, I'm just gonna kinda look around, see what all I can see, and wait on this comet. So we'll come back here in a bit and see what we can see. about six exposures in on M87 and I actually have, I'm doing 10 minute exposures. Let me turn on my screen here so you guys can see. They're looking pretty sweet. You can see right here, let's get rid of this stuff here. And yeah, check that out, 10 minute exposures. Stars look clean. Uh, let's do a little auto stretch here. Yeah, that's super nice. We're just gonna kind of shoot this until uh, the comet rises. I think it's kind of right above my house and it won't really clear that tree there until about 12.30, one o'clock. So yeah, let's do it. All right guys, so this is what we're seeing. You can see it's 12.58 and we're actually got the comet in here. This is through my guide scope. 
and you can see the column up in the left hand corner. 